returned, visitors and friends. We're going to be uh, singing a little a cappella tonight, so uh, again, y'all be sure and sing real, real loud, because I want to hear myself. <laughs> Brother A.D., do you want to lead us in a word of prayer? Wouldn't mind at all. Right. Lord God of glory, we call upon you once again as we should and as we can. Thank you for the freedom that we have in this day and time. Thank you, O Lord, for the many, many things that you've done for us. And we can never get even, Lord, but that's not our goal. Our goal is to find yet one more soul. Yes. Lord, help us to find somebody that would need your touch, that would need your blessings. We ask you, Lord, to help us to seek and find those that are in the darkness of this world that there is a great light that we can shine upon this evil world that people can see there is a better way than what is offered in this day and time. There are many people who have been named, Lord, that need it. Your healing touch. We ask you, Lord, to touch their hearts, their souls, their bodies, Lord. Make them whole. Give them that hunger and thirst to come back to your house. Give them, Lord, that willingness to do what they, we have to do. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for this great day that we've had, this celebration of veterans yes. that has served this country and everybody that's paid attention to it and respects it and thinks it and knows what's going on. We ask you, Lord, to guide and direct this country. Keep us, Lord. Help us to be that once great Christian nation that we once were. We can see your hand in the very government that we have now and keep leading our leaders. Keep them one step ahead of the evil that's around us. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll get y'all to turn to page 12 in the brown hymnal. That's right, I'm picking the songs tonight. So the rock fellow with it. I want a little curveball thrown in. Are you saying solo or rock a pillow? Rock a pillow. Rock a pillow and solo. <laughs> Everyone's singing solo. I'm about to give them a moment. Well, thank you. Page 12, we're going to sing in the garden. I think that's a pretty, pretty easy one, of course. <coughs> All right, my stretch. <laughs> I come to the garden alone while the
share tonight? Well, I have some, and I'm not a good speaker, so Anita can get up, and somebody else, some other ladies, <coughs> and that's all that she did. <coughs> the ladies' conference we went to yesterday in Bradley was just wonderful. I mean, Amen. it just blessed my heart and brought tears to my eyes, and but I just wished a lot of the ladies could hear that. Even the men <coughs> needed to hear it, but it was wonderful. And I also want to thank Connie for all that she's done. Yes. For the dads. That was cheerful today too, but it was beautiful tears. But anyway, I just appreciate everything that she's done for our dads. Amen. And I also want to commend uh, Blake and Haley for their song. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. Yeah. 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 Two young youngsters get up there. <coughs> just, just bless my soul too with that deep voice. I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a praise report. This morning I put my sister Joanne Clark on your prayer list and um, because she was facing surgery, two doctors had told her she was going to have to have that leg amputated that there was no other way. And as they put her in surgery this morning, which I thought was odd on a Sunday, you know, but I guess they do things like that if it's bad. And so they put her in surgery this morning to do the surgery, and they decided it was not as bad as they first thought it was. Amen. And so I Very think they're Lord. trying to wound pipe or something like that on it, and they are going to try that and see if that will work so that she won't have to have the amputation. And I know that that was God. Amen. 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 Yeah, I don't Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, what else? I want to say something because uh, what we're singing tonight uh, just stirred up a, a memory with me. And uh, what I was thinking is when uh, I first came here <laughs> and uh, we didn't have a piano player and I walked in and I said, well, is anybody going to lead the singing? They said, you are. And, uh, you know, and so I did, I led singing, and Sister Shirley was here, and y'all, when I got thinking about this tonight, with, without a piano player, we, we, we don't have to have a musician to praise God. Amen. 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 And when I thought about back to that time, we would have been so thankful to have this crowd Amen. <laughs> that day. Amen. Amen. And God has taken that and taken the prayers and taken the faith and grown this little church and brought it to life again. <coughs> Amen. Amen. And every once in a while, he reminds me of who he is Amen. and what he's done. And when we get the feeling that the church can't make it without us, we need to know this one thing. The church can make it without any one of us. Amen. Amen. But the church can't make it without Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen, Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. And, and he just reminded me of that while John was up here leading singing with no music. And I remember seeing that that first day, people swaying, and we'd sing one little fad, and they'd clap their hands, and I thought, you know, this is this is glorifying our Lord with what we have and with who we are. And I think that he hears our voices loud and clear in glory. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all for singing out like that and for worshiping the Lord with your hearts. All right, well, page 54. Yes. And we'll give y'all another chance for some more testimonies after this song, so y'all be thinking about it. Page 54, we'll sing I'll Fly Away. So glad morning when this life is over.
just a, the ladies thing or Bradley was, was just a blessing. It was 10 of us that went and uh, it was always a blessing. And the lady that uh, spoke was Becky Carpenter from Longview and she got up there. First thing she said, I have no filter. You know, I thought I can relate to this one. <laughs> but anyway, what she, how she spoke and, and what she talked about was just a, was a true, true blessing. And the, and the struggles and the storms that her and her family faced. Uh, she lost her 15-year-old daughter in a, in a car wreck. And she said, you know how your family portrait will change overnight. And that's how it was. And You know, my heart just went out to her. You know, we face storms. And, and, and you know, and, and you can, you can kind of, from her testimony, you can, you can receive some kind of comfort. And some kind of okay, she's gone through that. I mean, if I ever, God forbid, if any of us have to lose a child, and I know this is probably some to have, it's in here. But you know, you can look at her life and say she's been down that road, and she's come out of it. She come out of that storm. And so, in the whole time I was thinking about that, I was looking at Brother James Hill's jacket up here, and one of his tags or one of his what do you call those things? Patches, thank you. Has we paved the way. I'm thinking the way, the way. We are going on, you know, Jesus is the way. Amen. And we are paving that way like that woman did that lost her child, that she can comfort somebody else. If you come down this road and bam, you get that phone call and you say your fifteen year old daughter was killed in a rollover. You know, how are you going to strengthen somebody when they hit that? Say, pull them aside, let me talk to you. So they can soften the blow, you know. And I don't know how you can soften that kind of blow. But, you know, our U.S. Army paved the way for the troops to come in there to make it a lot easier to get in. So are we as Christians softening the blow for our fellow Christians that's coming behind us, especially our children our grandchildren? You so. know, are we softening that blow? Because we know, you know, we're getting to that age. We know that our children, grandchildren, and their children and grandchildren are going to come up on these situations. And how are they going to deal with it? You know, are we just going to say, I, I went through it, they can too. No. We've got to, you know, put our arms around and comfort them. Amen. And, you know, she made a remark. She said, when I was in that storm, she said, it lasted for years. She said, but Jesus was in that storm with, with me, calming me. I was still in that storm, but he was in there with me, calming me through it. Yes. And, you know, and she, and she said, you never get over it. Even after three years of her, of her daughter's death, they sold the house. She had to go up in the attic. And she said, there was trash bags all over the place. And when she told her 15-year-old daughter to clean up her room, she thought she was throwing the trash out, but she was putting it up in the attic. So when she went up in the attic to clean the attic out to get the house sold, it was like that flood went, you know, all, of, all the memories come back of her daughter. She said she had a war room experience in her attic. She said if the neighbors heard her, they probably would, should have called on her. But, you know, she said every bag that she went through was memories of her 15-year-old daughter that she lost. And so she said there was people that God put in her life that you know helps you know soften that blow, and she said, and so she she went through life living a Christian life, life but not believing it, and that hit me because a lot of us are just going through the motions, yeah. but she said when I started living life is when my 15 year old daughter died. And she said, I started believing, and she said, I had to turn it over to the Lord. Amen. And she said, I was living a Christian life. We were Sunday school teachers. We were working in the church. But when my 15-year-old daughter died, that's when I started believing that there is a God because I had to to get me through that. Yeah. And I thought, you know, what a testimony yeah. that that woman had. You know, to look at your 15-year-old daughter, and you'll never see her again. But she said, no, she's not in my past. She's in my future. She said, one day, I will see her again. Yes. And so, you know, just that comfort of those words that she had, I don't know how many times she shared that with me, but I know it touched me. I've not lost a 15-year-old daughter, but, you know, 
who knows what we'll be facing. Amen. You're on call away from your whole life being touched upside down. And what was so bad, this woman was a principal at the Quinton, 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 Quinton School. I don't know if y'all remember this. Happened about 10 years ago that there were six students that was an SUV rollover and she was the only one that was killed. They were going or coming from an FFA meeting or something. And uh, when she got the phone call at the school, of course, they had to tell her that there was a rollover and one of there was a fatality. And she knew her daughter was in that SUV. And she, and she said that mother instinct hit her in the gut. She knew it was her daughter. Yeah. And so when she got, she had to show up at the, at the wreck and, um, you know, it was, you know, how, how do you, I mean, there's no words, you know, there's no words of comfort, there's no words of encouragement, you know, how do you comfort somebody like that? Only God can. And she said that's the only thing that, that kept her from her, her just going completely crazy is, and she said, I jumped into the word, I started praying. And she said, that's what got me out. She said, have I gotten over it? No, it's been almost every 10 years in February. I had Googled it because I wanted a little bit more information about it. But, uh, you know, it's just something. But we all face those times in life. And are we going to just stop and say, this is the end of the road for me? Or like Brother James Hill's uh, patch up here, we're going to pave the way. We hit that spot in the road that knocked us flat on our face. Are we gonna get up? And like, you know, there's a little thing going on on Facebook. You know, I threw the towel in, but Jesus picked that towel up, threw it back at me and said, girl, get up and go do it again. Get after it again. Are we just gonna give up on life? You can't. Lord, don't give up on us. Amen. So we gotta keep going and paving, making yes. it easier for those that's coming behind us. Yes. To make it easier, say, you can do it. You can do it. It's worth it. It's worth every, every, you know, every anguish, every moment, every, every trial, every storm that you go through. It's worth it because on the other side of that storm, there's sunshine. Amen. So, I love this church. I love the the um, the veterans thing that we had this morning. Uh, Connie and I come from a long line of veterans on my mom's side. And it means the world to me that these men took out of their time to serve our country and women. And, women. and, um, and you know, back then when they, you know, they didn't have a choice. When you turned 18, you know, you enlisted and you was hoping your, your name wouldn't come up or your number wouldn't come up, you know. And if it did, you, you went in. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. And so, uh, you know, that generation <coughs> of men, I look at it and my hat's off to you. I mean, y'all, y'all just y'all stepped up, you, 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 and 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 went in and done what you had to do, and and I'm just so thankful for that generation, and uh, thankful for the, for the ones that uh, that served and and gave their all, and that's their life. You know, that's uh, that's a hard thing to deal with. You know, when even our first responders that we have here, we never know if they're going to come back home. But when you see one overseas or in combat, you you know it's a, you know it's a hard it's a hard time at home, yeah. with family at home to think about that. But I just love this church. I love the ceremony that we had tonight, and uh, just uh, just just keep paving paving that road to Amen. heaven and making it easier for our grandchildren, and our children. Saying my my parents or my grandparents went through that, I can too, you know, and and come out with you know. Uh, being a child of God and victorious because, you know, the Lord, we serve a captain that is victorious. And um, he's, a, he's our great leader and, and uh, we need to serve him with gladness and, and be able to stand up during those storms and saying, Lord, I'm going to face it, but I know you're going to call me through this and we're going to come out on the other side. Yes. Thank you. Amen. <clears throat> I want to say that I love the Lord and I'm thankful that we have such an awesome God to serve. And, you know, we look at other countries that don't have the freedom that we have. And even, you know, in politics, we're looking at possibility of having socialism or communism, same thing. And even if, if that should happen, this country was founded on, on Christianity and, and, and the Lord. 
And I'm just thankful that, you know, that we've had the years that we have of freedom in this country. And I'm just thankful for this church and uh, the church family we have. And I'm, and I'm just thankful that, that God sent Jesus here to walk this earth and, and uh, as a teacher. And, you know, I just can't imagine what it would have been if he hadn't. And, you know, for our sins and everything. And, and I just want to... You know, singing without piano, we kind of look at that, you know, of the, not having the pianist. I remember going to church with my grandmother. She was hard rock Baptist. They never had no piano in there. They didn't believe in having a musical instrument in there. But they also didn't have fans. They didn't have air conditioner. They had little paper fans you did like this. And and uh, and at Slat Sea, of course, now this building was still standing when, when the last members died, you know, but when everybody, other churches had air conditioning, that church didn't have air conditioning and piano, you know, and we're, we're blessed in this church, and we just got to, you know, if we have to sing without a piano, that's just not a big deal. That's right. Um, John, when I started asking about all the pictures, and people started bringing them what a better way for our church to get to know one another. I didn't know that A.D. was military, police. I knew he was a Marine, because once a Marine, always a Marine. Because we've got Rough. one, we've got a grandson. We, we said bye to last Sunday night from the airport to go back to Okinawa. But looking at all these pictures, we get to know one another more on a personal basis. Mm -hmm. wow. And and it breaks my heart to know how many families, just by looking at, say for instance, Jim's picture, there was a mother and a father, brothers and sisters probably left behind when he went in. So it affects, it, it, it just branches <laughs> out to lots of, lots of people. Um, about 6.30, uh, five years ago, our mother passed away, November the 10th, and I miss her every day, but one of the things, like Mita said, that she was proud of was her military connection with her family, and she knew she was dying, she'd gone through so much treatment, that she wanted us to put together a military video, because it was veterans. And uh, I'm going to end it off with this on a little lighter note, that when we played it at her services, because she wanted it played during the service, um, since Johnny did me that way this morning in Sunday school class, I will say this, that when it came around, and we have music behind it, and when it came around to Johnny's picture, everybody went. <laughs> um, and, uh, so, uh, I got you back. Hmm. <laughs> hey, man. But, you know, the deal is, uh, I love our military family. Um, we had a mom's brother. Mom, mom didn't know him that well. Uh, she was a very young, young child when he was killed in the invasion of Normandy. You know, and this is the 75th year of that invasion. And I found the picture of uh, President um, and First Lady with some of the D-Day veterans that were still living. And I saw it on TV where they were just cold. And I just remember back in June when they were playing that, how I just sat there and cried. <coughs> because we're losing all of those older soldiers. Um, and I even did some research on the Navajos. Uh, one of the last, the very last initial 29, gone. And what they did for our country, for us to be able to sit here and not be frightened because we're here. Amen. It's because of these, these gentlemen, A.D., Jim, Gary Richardson, so forth, that served, that we're here. And it's not all about me putting all of this together. I wasn't the only one. Anita helped. If 
Y'all noticed the sign? Yesterday, just so happened that Bob Price came in. Y'all need some help. He put the sign up. James Hill came in. Y'all need some help. So it all came together as a group effort. A group effort. And um, <coughs> so I appreciate everybody's help. I hope next year that everybody knows kind of what we want, what we need, and we can put out more tables, mm -hmm. and we get to know everybody more Amen. on more of a personal basis, for sure. Need and Gary are going to a, a, a graduation for their grandson, Air Force. So we went to San Diego and watched Adam, and I stood there. It was cold, rainy, and I just cried. It was such an emotional event. So I appreciate our military. I, I do. I appreciate them each and every one. And we can't thank you guys enough. I mean, this is nothing. I, I felt that it was just, what can we do more? And uh, there's not enough that we can do. And that's the same way with our Lord Jesus Christ. We can't do enough. We can't say I love you enough. We can't say thank you enough for what he's done for us. And, uh, but guys, I appreciate all y'all's services. Miss Jean is here, our female that served. And um, thank you all so much for helping out and getting this put together. I know you don't say anything, so I'll just keep it real short. You know, look at this table up here and all these pictures and different, different services representing their thing. I never was in service or anything. Several of us haven't been, but uh, I had a younger brother who was, he was over in Vietnam. But, uh, you know, I, I'm sure some churches have gotten away from even recognizing their veterans and everything. But some of you, I think, personally already, some of you, I haven't, but I do want to join like with everybody else. I appreciate all of our servicemen, the ones that serve for, for our nation. Uh, younger brother, he never had really talked about over there in Vietnam. I saw, I saw just a few pictures one time. He was showing me just a few pictures, and uh, there's one body on the ground, and it had little dark spots all over his body. And uh, I said, I, I just made the comment to him. I said, man, I said, just look at the flies that's all over that guy's body. He said, that's not flies. He said, that's bullet holes. And just bought it really full. So I can't I can't say, you know, some people have lost a child and they can comfort somebody that they know what it's going with. You know, they can comfort somebody else that has lost a child. But I couldn't do that. I couldn't just tell a person I know what you're going through. You know, if they've lost a child, I never have lost a child or anything. And uh, for what our military men and women have gone through. Unless you've experienced it, I, I know I couldn't even begin to comprehend what they've gone through. So once again, I, I join with everybody else, thanking all the men and women that have served their nation. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to. I want to add a little something to what I've heard here already. First place, thank you all for all the attention you paid to this. It seemed like so a hundred years ago in my life, just a kid of a boy, 17 years old. And uh, I say it as a joke, but my dad had to sign for me to join at 17 because he had to be 18. He was up there rather quick to sign those papers <laughs> to get me in the military and the boy. <laughs> This is going to do you a world of good. <laughs> and uh, I want to say this about that. Something that uh, Brother Gary said this morning about working together and the Lord using the military of the world, the Lord using the Christians of the world. While we were in boot camp, there's, always, there's a way to do everything, military ways. You don't sit just any old way you want to sit. You don't talk any way you want to talk. You don't look any way you want to look. You just do what they tell you to do. And while we were sitting on the ground one day, 
I looked out there in the middle of us and there was a great big log, more like a telephone pole, but bigger. And I don't know, it must have been 20 foot long. And that old sergeant said, I need 100 of you boys, I mean 10 of you boys that can lift 100 pounds over your head. Well, I'll get some of that, so there was 10 of us that lifted their hands. He said, that log weighs a thousand pounds. If 10 of you pick up a hundred pounds each, you pick it up. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, I believe it was more like 2,000 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> but we did manage struggling and grunting and straining to get that thing off the ground. And the beauty part is he had us walk with it and we're on kind of hilly ground. And everywhere you went across a little dip, the short people couldn't touch the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody had to take up the slack. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this is a, a, a marine training tradition. And they'll tell you point blank that we planned it this way. Mm -hmm. We want you to understand mm -hmm. and know what you've got to do and it's not always going to be exactly like you want it to be. But I, I said all that to say that that is a training session that we can apply to this church. If we all pull together and everybody will seek to find one person that needs the Lord today, we can work together and get that person in, in soul saved. I've heard Brother Gary say it time and time again, it doesn't necessarily have to be this church. Just get in a church somewhere while there's still time. The Lord's not going to tarry with men's souls forever. There's coming a day when he's going to just say, okay, that's it. And those that got in, got in, and those that didn't, it's too bad. But I brought that up about that log that we were carrying because it, it reminds me of how we have to be united <coughs> we have to all stick together. We have to all believe one thing, and that's the Word of God. If you're off on some rabbit trail somewhere, believing something else, or listening to some other teachings, you're making a sad mistake. I've got books at home, I, I haven't even looked for them for years, <coughs> that have every excuse in the world for why the world is like it is to now. None of them <coughs> agree with the Word of God. They're even teaching that after the flood, they want to acknowledge, I've read these books, they want to acknowledge the existence of Noah, but that something happened, that this world was flooded, and that's when disease came into the world. It was with all the potholes of water and stagnation and the germs and the, that, if you read that kind of stuff, I'm telling you, they'll lead you off down a rabbit trail, it's nothing but darkness. Well, I just laughed at it, but I, I want to go back to that log. Once you get it cleared, the heavy part off the ground, it's a piece of cake. You just grin at everybody because we did it. And I'm telling you, this church can do the same thing. Everybody just toe the line and pull, do your part, and it'll work out just as smooth as it can be. We're blessed to have the preachers we have. We're blessed to have the piano player we have. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're certainly blessed to have each other. Amen. Amen. I, I can't say enough about how, how good it is to have people like y'all around to know personally. Some of them I'm, I'm getting to know better. But it, it's, a, it's a brotherhood that's formed. Somebody said once a Marine, always a Marine. If you'd have been through what I have, you'd understand what that's all about. I wouldn't, I wouldn't forsake them another Marine for nothing. But that's just the teachings that they have, and we've got to have that attitude about our Lord. I wouldn't give my Lord up for anything. I never want to go back to those days. I don't want to see what this world has to offer. I don't want to be a part of it anymore. And that's the, where the Satan wants to get into your life and tell you, well, you think they're better than everybody else. Mm -hmm. And all that stuff starts 
And there's nothing but the praise of Lord, of our Lord and Savior that will take it out of your mind and it will help you to work it out. I thank you all for everything you've done today. I, I can't begin to tell you how much it stirred me up to see a church that recognizes and appreciates the veterans. And I, I almost said it this morning. If you don't appreciate our flag and you don't appreciate our national anthem, you don't deserve to be here. Amen. And I, I hate to let it sound hateful as it does, but I'm serious. You don't appreciate what's been sacrificed for you. You're in a sad situation. Amen. Well, uh, I've just about said enough, and I, I thank you. Uh, all this, uh, I look at it as an all expense paid vacation. <laughs> <laughs> all, all the medical assistance you needed, all the meals you wanted three times a day, place to sleep, get up, and take care of business. And uh, I'll tell you this. I did it then as a 17 year old and you couldn't give me a million bucks to go back to 17 and do it over. <laughs> <laughs> but I thank you church for what you've done today and I appreciate it. Alright, anyone? The scary thing about learning about him is, is I've been picking on Brother A.D. since I met him and I didn't know he'd know nine different ways to kill you with <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more song here, page 99. We're going to sing the first, third, and fifth verse of Trust and Obey. <clears throat> when we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory! Sheds on our way while we do his good will. He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no
God bless you all. Thank you for being here tonight. We're going to do a Sunday night service just a little bit different, and I know it's getting late. And I thank God for all the testimonies and all that you've shared tonight. And uh, I'm not going to have you to read scriptures uh, for me tonight. Uh, I want to take this uh, just a few more minutes to uh, to share a scripture that the Lord laid on my heart. And I think uh, uh, that the uh, testimonies from tonight kind of uh, verifies what the Lord has shown me that He wanted to share with you tonight. And uh, and uh, AD kind of put it together with a little log story. And uh, the title of this message tonight is "Workers Together." And uh, it's amazing. How God works, isn't it? Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Second Corinthians chapter five. We're going to be reading uh, verse uh, seventeen in Second Corinthians five through uh, chapter six, verse three. I'll give you just a second to turn there. And thank y'all for all the testimonies for sharing tonight. Thank you for being here tonight, and God bless our family. God, God bless you all for for the service that you have given to this nation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, begin reading in verse 17. You ought to love to read this whole chapter 5. It was a beautiful chapter. Uh, but verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All the things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. For he hath made him, to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. We then as workers together with him beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted and in the day of salvation I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the death salvation, giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. Father God, thank you for your word. Speak to us, Lord. It's only you can do. And we're going to give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Verses 17 through 19 are some scriptures that, it, it, uh, that you've heard time and time again. If you've been a Christian for 40 years, you've probably heard this in 40 or or 50 sermons, different sermons. This this scripture preached. It's a sermon. It's a, a verse in verse 17 that we quote often and often and often and very often. That that when Christ is in us, we become what? A new creature. A new creature. We become a new creature, and all the old stuff is, is gone. We are forgiven. Y'all were forgiven for everything. We got a brand new start. It's it. When Jesus said we're born again, that's what he's talking about. Everything is over. Everything is gone. And you have been given a brand new start. All this old stuff has passed away. And everything becomes new. One of the pleasures of being a pastor and a preacher is seeing someone come to the, the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and see what it does in their lives. Amen. How it changes their lives. I've seen uh, children get saved, and you can tell, even in a child, the change that God has, taken, has, has provided in their life and the change that begins to take place in their lives. It's a beautiful thing to see. But verse 18 is, is, is not the one we quote. I want you to look at this. And because sometimes we read these verses and we miss things. And look at what verse 18 says. And all things are of God. Everything's from God. Now look at what God has done. He hath reconciled us to himself. Literally think about that. God <coughs> reconciled me and you back to himself. What had separated us? Sin. Sin in the lostness of humanity had separated us from our holy God who created man and made us in his image and, and, the, and the, the, what he wanted most in, in everything that goes on in this world is to be able to call us his sons and his daughters again. 
And the Bible says that he reconciled us back to himself. How did he do this? Through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Yes. Praise God for Jesus Christ. <laughs> that we have a heavenly father that loves us so much that he gave us his only begotten son. And when you read this scripture, all of those other scriptures that we like to quote make a lot more sense, don't they? It makes the sense as to why Jesus Christ did what he did and what prompted him to do what he did and what empowered him to do it despite the fact that he didn't really want to do it. He did it anyway. Why? So he could, he could provide the means to reconcile us back to a holy righteous, supreme God. Hallelujah. Praise God. We are to shout every time we think about this. So he reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and look at what he did. When he reconciled us back to himself through Jesus Christ, the Bible says right here, he gave us something. Look at it. I told you, I tell you all the time, you know, I know I'm a minister. People call preachers a minister. Brother Petty, you're a, Brother Steve, you're, you're a minister. But let me tell you what, so are you, and you, and you, and you, and you. Because when you have received Jesus Christ as your Savior, and God reconciled you back into His bosom through the, through the death and resurrection of His Son, He gave you something. He calls it here the ministry of reconciliation. Amen? We're to go out and we're to help other people find Jesus Christ. That's what we're on mission to do. That's what we're supposed to be doing. That is the ministry that God himself, through Jesus Christ, has given each and every one of us. Not just the preacher, not just the deacon, not just the Sunday school teacher. Every person that is saved by God is Amen. given this ministry. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. And if we just take this ministry serious. And he said to wit that God was in Christ. Y'all want to know why Christ could do what he did. He was God. Amen. 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 He was God. That he was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Now think about that. And hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. And so we, he has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. He's given us the ministry of reconciliation. He was in God. He was in Christ. He's the one that empowered this whole thing. And he decided not to count our sins against us. Because why did he have to do that? <laughs> because sin separates us from him. Amen? And he had to have a way to take that sin and cast it away from us so that we could come before him, listen to me, holy, righteous, and pure. Amen. And he knew that we were not righteous men or women, that we were born in sin, that we were shaken in iniquity. And so the Bible says that he came up with this, this plan. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten Amen, son. Amen, brother. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Y'all, he gave you a promise when you said you believe in Jesus and you receive Christ into your, into your life, into your heart, into your being. He saves you and he does not impute iniquity against you. Now listen to me. You said, well, you know what? How many of you ever feel worthy of God? How many of you ever feel righteous and holy? The Bible says we don't. We, we don't. We don't have to even read it in the Bible. We don't feel that way. Not a single one of us. I don't feel worthy to stand before you right now. I don't stand. I don't feel worthy to proclaim the name of Jesus or even say the name of Jesus. I feel like those Israelites who that wouldn't even say the word, the, the, the name of God out loud. Amen. We're not worthy of that. But he says. I've done something to make you worthy. Now I want you to listen to this. He's done something to make us worthy. And so he's made us ambassadors. That means that we are now his representatives. Did you know that? That's what ambassadors are. We are all ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead. Be you reconciled to God. Now I want you to listen to that right there and then we'll get to the the, the other part about the sin. <coughs> Listen to me. He gave you a command right here. 
And I've told y'all this time and time again. God don't force himself on you. He says right here that you have the responsibility of making yourself reconciled to God through his son. It's a decision that you have to make for yourself. It's a decision that you have to make if you want to serve God or not serve God. You want to live for God or not live for God. If you want to be as him, his ambassador or not be as his ambassador. He says right here, he says, be you reconciled to God. Why? Why can this be possible? Why can we be worthy? Why can we feel that it's, that it's okay? Why can I stand up here and preach although I'm a sinner? Look at the next verse, verse 21. For he has made him that knew no sin to be sin for us. And because Jesus Christ became my sin, I can stand here. And so can you. You can stand up and testify. Praise the name of God. You can stand up and testify and tell what great things he's done in your life. Why? Because the one that never sinned at all became mine and your sin. How could he find a way to not impute your sin against you? Through Jesus Christ. The one who knew no sin. And he became sin for each and every one of us. He that knew no sin. Listen to this. Why did he do that? That we may... <coughs> might be made the righteousness of God in him. Think about that. You know why we're righteous? Because Jesus is righteous. Amen. You know why our sin is not imputed against us? It's because Jesus has died for that sin and bled for that sin and covered that sin and has forgiven us. Why our righteousness that are filthy rags according to the word of God that are filthy before God. But when you put Jesus in the mix, he takes away our filthiness. And he makes us sons of God. Amen? Amen. He reconciles us back to his Father. It's what he's done for us. And the Lord God accepts that from him. Y'all, I had an old preacher, I don't even like him no more, named Gene Parker. <laughs> he was my preacher for 20-something years. And he said to me one time, I was questioning about how we're going to stand before God and, and, I, and the sin is still in our lives. And, and he said, I'm going to tell you, I have, a, I've had, I have a vision about that. He said, I can see us standing before God or bowed before God. And God in his wrath and anger looks at him at us and, and he, he, he smells the sin. He sees the sin in that sinner. And, and, and it, it's everything he can do to keep from his wrath just destroying you. And then all of a sudden, Jesus Christ stands between you and him. And God don't see the sinner anymore. He sees his son. And you're in that son. Amen, brother. And you're reconciled back to him. And the one that knew no sin becomes that sin. The one that, that, that knew, didn't do anything deserved wrath has received the wrath for you already. And you are able to be before the Father holy, clean, and righteous because his son is there too. Amen. Isn't that a beautiful thought? And y'all, we struggle with this sometimes. We struggle with this in our life. We struggle with this in our church. We struggle with this in our Christian walk because we feel so unworthy. The Bible says you are worthy because of Jesus. Amen. Y'all, we need to start living life like we are worthy. Not arrogant, but like we're worthy. Amen. That we do have the right to tell somebody else that Jesus Christ will save them to the uttermost. That we do have the right to tell people, although there's sin in our lives, and they may know it. Yeah, I'm a sinner, but let me tell you what, there's a difference between me and you. I'm a sinner saved by grace. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm reconciled back to the, to the Father through His Son. The one that knew no sin became my sin. Do you have that going on for you? Amen. Do you have that? We all better say yes to that. 
But that's not where we need to stop. We need to go on because when we are saved and we're reconciled back to God and we become His ambassadors and He gives us the, the ministry of reconciliation, He gives us this ministry so we can lead other people to Jesus Christ. Amen? In order for us to do that, y'all, there's something we got to do. We need to be united in purpose. We need to be united in prayer. We need to be united in spirit. We need to be united in Jesus Christ. It don't make no difference what the sign on the building out there says. We need to be sons of God, reconciled to the God the Father through Jesus Christ the Son. Amen. And look at what 6 and 1. See, we put these chapters and verses in the Bible. These original texts didn't have that. They rolled out and scrolled and they just read it. And so this thought didn't stop with chapter at the end of chapter 5. And he goes on and he says, we then, see that? Because of what we just read, we then, look at this, as workers, how? Together. Together with who? With him. With him. Oh, let me tell you what. When we decide we want to work together without him, it won't work. Amen. 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 When we decide to work together without him, it's all thrown out the window. So he says, we then, because of what, who we are in Christ Jesus, because he had a you know sin, became the righteousness of God in us. We now can be workers together with Jesus Christ, with him. Amen. And then he says this. Beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. Mm -hmm. Now he threw that in. And, and I got to thinking about, well, wait a minute. What, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? And then, so I, I took the time and I looked up this definition of vain. And usually when you think about vanity, you think about looking in the mirror and, and, and admiring yourself. Mm -hmm. And that is vanity. Amen. <coughs> but that's not all the meaning here. So he says uh, the, 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 the definition of vain is without real significance, without real value, without real importance. And y'all, when we, <coughs> let me tell you, that because this is what the Lord put in my mind about this, in my heart about this. There's too many Christians that call, people that call themselves Christians, that try to live for God yet they don't make it the most important and the most significant thing in their life, and so they just halfway live for God. They live for God when it's a good time, when it's a convenient time, Amen. when nothing else ain't going on, we'll live for God. That's not what the Bible says. He says, I beseech you, brethren. I beg you, don't treat the grace of God in vain. Live for Jesus and be glad you can live for Jesus because of what Jesus has done for you. Amen. And be that ambassador, that one that's called into the ministry of reconciliation, that's proud to do that. And, and this is this definition here that that uh, that uh, receive not the grace of God without real significance, without real value, without real importance excessively proud or concerned about one's own appearance, qualities, or achievements. Y'all, it is not about us. No, that's right. nope. And there's too many people in the churches that, if it ain't going to be my way, there's going to be some trouble around here. Amen. Y'all, we just had a business meeting while ago. Y'all are the most gracious, wonderful church to have a business meeting with I've ever encountered. Amen. Never seen nothing like it. We can disagree and then we can disagree and everybody giggles about it. Weird. But Stephen ain't supposed to be that way, is he? You know why it's that way? Because we love Jesus and we don't really give a hoot. Amen? Amen. What difference does it make how we do it? Let's just get her done. Yeah. Amen? Hey, if, if somebody said let's do it this way, let's find a way to do it. Amen? Because why? Because we're working together and we're working in Him and it's going to work that way. Amen. All we got to do is keep from arguing, keep from fighting, and keep from trying to do everything our way and do it His way. We're good now. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. So He said, I, I don't want you to treat the, the, not to receive the grace of God in vain. 
receive it and be proud. Be glad. And be willing to share it selflessly. Not selfishly. Amen. That's what he's saying to us. I know I got to move on. Just about through. And then he says this. For I've heard thee in a time accepted. And in the day of salvation that I succored thee. Now when I think about succored. I had to think about that word for a while. Uh, Troy. Because you know. I don't know about suckers. Sucker punch. We don't know. None of us want that do we? But he said, I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So I looked up this definition too. Boy, this old Arkansas boy is full of wisdom today. <laughs> Amen. Sucker means help, relief, aid, assistance. A person or thing that gives help, relief, aid, etc. To help or relieve in difficulty, need, or distress. You know who that's talking about? Jesus Christ. He has... He is our aid. He is our ever-present help in time of need. Do you believe that? Amen. He is the one who suffers us, who gives us this aid, who gives us this salvation. He is the captain of our salvation, and he's given us all of himself. And he's given us everything we need. And then it says here, he said, I have given you everything you need. I've given you all the assistance. I've given you all the relief. I've given you all the aid that you need. That's what he said. I have suffered thee. That's what that means. And he said, but behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. I got to thinking about that. And I'm thinking, you know, that it is the right. Every day is a good day to be saved. Amen. But you know what? That's not all he means by that. It's kind of got a twofold meaning because of what he just said. It's the time, the day to realize that I have the help, I have the assistance from a holy, righteous God. I've been given the spirit of ministry and now it's time for me to be about his work. Amen? Amen. Today, now is that accepted time. Today, is that day of salvation when I realize that the grace of God is not given to me or you in vain. Amen. But it's been given to me in power. It's been given to me in might. It's been given to me through His Son. And I am reconciled back into the bosom of God Almighty because of that relationship. And now He wants me to tell people <laughs> about that. Yeah. Amen. Right. He wants me to tell people about that. That's what he wants us to do. And he wants us to work together with him to accomplish that goal. Exactly. Workers together. A.D. said, told that story a while ago about they finally, you know what? Can you imagine? Somebody had to pick up one end of that big log and the rest of them get a hold of it. Mm -hmm. Amen. So that person that could pick up 100 pounds and they got three or four of them on there, they could pick up three or 400 pounds. How much did it weigh to get that thing up off the ground? And then as they started, started slowly getting under it, they began to get lighter on this end down here until every one of them got them some of that weight. And then it didn't weigh all that much, did it? And then the funny little story he told when they went over a dip and the short ones were hanging, they had to hold more. That's the way the life of the church is. That's the way we work together. Amen. When one stumbles and falls, we pick them up. There you go. And keep on walking. Amen. Amen. When one of them can't carry the load, you carry that load for them. Amen. Amen. You help them out, but you never quit working. You never quit being the ambassadors. You never quit working the ministry of reconciliation. And then he says in verse 3, if we will do this, there will be no reason for anybody to take offense at us. Listen to this. Giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. Y'all, it's time that people quit saying that church is full of hypocrites. Amen. You know, that's why the church has said that, that they, people say that about the church today because we're not living it that way right there. Preacher. Amen. We need the people to look at the church and say, hey, them people are here for Jesus right there. Those people, they got the spirit. Those people right there, they help. Those people right there are working together. 
They got something going on there. Let's go see what it is. Let's talk to one of them and see what's going on there. And y'all, that is the ministry of reconciliation that's given to every one of us that has been reconciled to the Father by the Son. Amen. God bless you. I love y'all. Thank you, Jesus. Would you stand, please? Now, we don't have a musician here tonight, so if you'd like to come to these altars, we're going to have an altar call just for a moment. Bow your head, please, close your eyes. Pray that you'd be thinking about what the Scripture told us tonight. What thus says the Word of God, what it tells us, what He has told us tonight, the same thing that applied to those Corinthians, the letter that He wrote to them, applies to us, the Church of Jesus Christ, today. The same, it has not changed. The same laws apply, the same Spirit applies, the same God applies, and the way is always the same the way Jesus has made for us. Let's don't forget Brother Bill Woods he called today. Told me that he wasn't feeling good for reason he wasn't here. Amen. Today. Bless him, Lord. And that he told him, told me he said tell everybody I love him. And I would have loved to have been there for the, the celebration. I just wasn't able to go today. Yes. Remember him and I and our yes. Touch him, Lord. Remember Bob. I left today to go to Houston. Amen. He's had the MD Anderson. He, he should be there about now. <clears throat> and uh, that, that all goes well. And anyone else that you can think of that needs prayer, be in prayer for each other. Let's work together. Let's work together through all this with each other, holding each other up, lifting one another up, spurring one another up. Amen. Let's be this church that he has told us about tonight. Let's be the ministers of reconciliation between lost man and God. Brother Steve, would you pray for us, please? Sure. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, again, we praise you. We lift everyone up, the prayers of the <laughs> on the hearts of these saints, soldiers and a mighty army. We pray that we would serve you in spirit and truth. We pray you'd as you're walking up and down the aisle of this church today, right now, and we will follow you to the ends of the earth. We pray that you would lead us and guide us as soldiers in a mighty army of God, that we might be led to others out there, the last, the least, the lost, wherever they might be, that we might be the light, they might Amen. see you in us. That Jesus, we would be the imitators of Jesus today. And they would see you high and lifted up. That when we are, I see our eyes, they would see the light of the Most High shining in us. Father, we thank you and praise you for your word, the testimonies, the men that are serving today in many places overseas. We pray for those chaplains to reach out and touch and to make an impact on those soldiers and sailors, wherever they might be, whatever service wing it is. And Father, we pray for the mighty army that you provided in the churches throughout the whole world. That we might rise up and be the church that you called us to be. Amen, brother. And that we might speak the truth led by the power of the Holy Spirit. And people would be saved, reconciled back to you. That we might follow you until that day when you come. And we see the eastern sky breaking and we're out of here. But we pray for those that they are outside the walls of churches. We pray that we might be out there and the, outside the walls of the church talking to them. And we pray that they would see and hear as the Holy Spirit moves in them. They'll make that decision and come to you. Father, we thank you that somebody did that for us. And we came, and we pray that we can do the same. So we lift it all up to you, and we're following you only. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen brother. Thank you.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.